they have not met during the regular season, which is somewhat odd because usually in the Catholic League you play pretty much everybody. But, yeah. So we have a treat tonight for the national anthem tonight. Bill Orris is a gentleman who we have known for years. Outstanding official. And we've had a lot of games where he's been the official. Well, tonight he's at center court and he is going to be singing our national anthem. Tonight's Super Sectional Championship Final features the St. Patrick Shamrocks. Versus the Mount Carmel Caravan. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that the audience please rise in observance of our national anthem and in support of the troops that present our country. And now to honor America with the singing of the Star Spangled Banner is referee Bill Orris. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Well, if Bill and the crew perform that well tonight, wow. we are going to have a very uncontroversial game in front of us, Kenny. Yeah, I didn't know he could sing. I did not either. We've known Bill for years. That was unbelievable. So it comes down to this for these two teams tonight. Obviously, it is win or go home. And nobody wants to go home. St. Patrick comes into this game as the number two seed and the champions of the Fenwick sectional. Let's go to the PA announcer for the starting lineups. Number 13, EJ At guard, a senior. Number 11, A.J. Thomas. <laughs> the man in the middle for the Shamrocks. Number 30, a junior, Navea Hawkins. At guard, a junior, number 23, Cooper Cavanaugh. And at guard, a senior, number 24, Harper Rolak. The head coach of the Shamrocks is Mike Bailey. Now introducing the starting lineup for the Mount Carmel Caravan. The point guard, he is a sophomore, number two, Noah Mister.
At guard, a junior, number three, Grant Best. The man in the middle for the caravan. At forward, a senior, number 10, Christian Yurimovic. At guard, also a junior, number 21, Cameron Thomas. And the scoring guard, a senior, number 33, Angelo Cherubino. The head coach of the caravan is Phil Seagroves. Phil Seagroves in year number six as head coach at Mount Carmel after succeeding Mike Flaherty. Let's get a look again. Here are the starting lineups for the two teams. By the way, as Perry would say, I don't often break out the Harry, but I... Run. He has put this team on his back for St. Patrick's. Well, one thing for sure, the St. Patrick's crowd, the student body, they're one of the best you'll ever see in all of Chicago. As I said, it may be no school in the Catholic League is basketball a bigger deal than at St. Pat's, especially if they're lined up to play a game against Notre Dame. Well, if you've never been to a Notre Dame-St. Pat's game, make sure you look it up in the schedule next year and go. But get there early, you have no chance of getting a seat. St. <laughs> Pat's with the ball to start it out. They'll get the first crack at it in this 3A super sectional matchup. A.J. Thomas goes to the hoop off the glass, couldn't get it. And the ball was last touched by Cameron Thomas of Mount Carmel. The ball will stay with the Shamrocks. Well, one thing, Mount Carmel, what you want to do, you don't want to give the Shamrocks a second opportunity. As we mentioned, Mike Bailey, 30 years as head coach. One of the best at coaches Pat's. you will ever find. City, state, suburb. Doesn't make a difference. This man can coach. When your winning percentage is running around 67%, you know it's pretty good. Yeah, I think he's very underrated, to be honest. Harper Krolak with the basketball. Gives it off. A.J. Thomas looking down the lane. Nothing there. Three-pointer on the way. And that one is good. Cooper Cavanaugh gets the scoring started. Yeah, right off the bat, Cavanaugh using the glass to get the three-point shot in. Exactly what St. Patrick's wanted. And now they're going to go into a 1-2-2 two, two zone. Caravan 30 and 5 on the season. Well, when you want to move the ball, Caravan turn it over, taken away by Breland. Breland down the lane, beautiful feed that was blocked, and staying with it twice and being a little too strong is Neve Hawkins. After the stop, Mount Carmel drive to the basket, hanging in the air and shooting. And missing was Sherevino. Now here come the Shamrocks. I'm not sure they want to make it a running gun ball game. Breland couldn't get the roll. Grant Best clears the boards for Mount Carmel. The caravan, they like to get up and down the court. They like to run and gun. Sherevino. Nice step inside beyond the college line. Three-pointer won't go. Mount Carmel 0 for so far. No one missed her with a long one, couldn't hit. And Breland again with another nice play on defense by getting the rebound. Yeah, great defensive rebound by Breland and the caravan cold to start the ball game. Harper Krolak rattles one in. Two three-pointers on the board for St. Pat's. Boy, great spacing by St. Pat. We do that one, two, two. They were the number two seed. They knocked off Peyton College Prep in their section final. 
short little runner by Thomas, and he breaks that lid off the basket for Mount Carmel. That's a great job by Thomas attacking the gap in that zone. He found a gap, he attacked it, comes away with a nice elbow jump shot. I think you made an important point a moment ago, Kenny, and we get an offensive foul, our first foul of the game called. An important point about that St. Pat's does not want to run up and down the floor. No, I don't think they want to run up and down the floor. They do such a great job by running their sets. And also, if you slow this game down, it gives you a chance also to get back into your 1-2-2 two, two zone. So he had to move the ball, attack a gap, but he lost it off of his foot. Second turnover for the caravan. St. Pat's leading by four. Long three-pointer off the back of the iron. Tapped out. Krolak ended up with the rebound. Krolak gets it back. He'll fire a three. Three three-pointers for St. Pat's. Yeah, the three-pointers are going down for St. Patrick's. You know, I saw St. Patrick's play Marist early in the year in the game they lost. But you can see that this team was very talented, and Coach told me, once we get it together, Kenny, we're going to be pretty good. Thomas steals it away at midcourt, and he'll lay it in. What a great job by Thomas again, using his body to seal it off the defender and the caravan decide, hey, loosen enough, let's take a timeout. A nine-point lead early for St. Patrick as they try to win their first super sectional game ever. And Kenny and I have brought a little extra help along for tonight. Let's start off by going to Casey Standahar. Guys. Caravan at coach Phil Seagroves gave me an update pregame on a player he calls his Scotty Pippen on the team. Guard Lee Marks has been out since February. Miss him and are obviously bummed for him. But one thing Seagroves noted is this team has learned how to play without marks and made necessary adjustments. The biggest being more of an emphasis on ball movement and keeping guys ready for extra minutes. If Angelo Sheravino. I bet he said, when do we win tonight? <laughs> because, you know, coaches love to say, we're going to win the ball game. Mount Carmel, one of four from the field so far. They've turned it over three times already. They've got some really good shots, but they have not been strong with the basketball. Grant Best in the corner. Cameron Thomas. Three-pointer. Noah missed her. That one rattles off. Rebound. Yurevich with a rebound. Cameron Thomas back of the iron. No. Best with the rebound. Got bumped. Couldn't get the roll. Grant Best will go to the line. Well, you can't give a good team like Mount Carmel three opportunities, Jim. They've done a really good job crashing the offensive of boards. And I'm sure Coach Bailey's telling these guys, hey, look, you got to put a body on these guys. You just can't out-jump them. R.J. McPartland picks up the first foul of the game. Speaking of first in the game, Kenny, we've already had one St. Pat's player come to Kenny and check in. <laughs> it never fails. We are we are right next to the St. Pat's bench. What the players have to be aware of is Kenny just waves them in. Wave them in. Well, go ahead, yeah, go. And then the you know next thing you know, you're out there on the floor and you get a technical because the official didn't see you in. We're gonna hold. Now we're getting a whole lineup of guys. All, all the way down, guys. Yeah, they've got to get all the way down there. <laughs> just checked in with me. What is it about you that they think you're the guy they're supposed to check in? I never understand that. I guess I, I have that official look. Right. St. Pat's, four of nine shooting the basketball. Three of those four made field goals are three-pointers. This is what they do so well, run their offense. They just take their time, run their offense, get a good shot. Thomas breaks it down. He dribbled. He had a little bit of a high dribble, had to pick it up and pass it out instead of continue to drive to the basket there. Stop for Mount Carmel. Sheravino gives it up. Grant Best, long three, got it. Boom. That was a logo shot. Best with five, and the lead is down to four, and the subs will come in. Boy, what a shot by Best. That was even with the UIC logo. And that's something with Mark Carmel. That's what they need to do if you want to get St. Patrick's out of the zone. Anthony Fabia and Nathan Nano into the game for St. Pat's. So, yeah, it's starting out well for Mike Bailey because not only does he have the lead, he can get some other guys in. You guys can rest. See if St. Pat's can keep this up. We're just past the midway point of this opening quarter. 
tell you the truth, Kenny, St. Pat's is looking in this first part of the game like Downers North looked last year in the 4A super sectional we did here. Little Getting short the jumper off the run, A.J. Thomas with the bucket. Taking their time. Again, A.J. Thomas taking his time, looking for the good shot. They do such a wonderful job of being patient, not looking for the first shot, but the best shot. Sheravino, 4-3. That one no good. And the rebound pulled down by Breland. And look at Breland being smart, slowing it up, taking his time. Six-point lead for St. Pat's. They led by nine at one point. They work the weave in the drive. Beautiful no-look pass. And a reverse layup by Neve Hawkins. Well, Neve Hawkins was underneath the basket. And he really he couldn't go right straight up because he ran into the basket, did a nice reverse move. Sheravino and Mister working the two-man game way out the top. Good thing Sheravino was tall. Best turns, fires, tough shot. Couldn't hit it. And we have... Two players come down with the rebound, held ball, and the ball will favor Mount Carmel. The arrow favors Mount Carmel. Well, keep it. Tommy just skied the 6-3 junior from Mount Carmel to bring that rebound down. Ended up being a jump ball with a tie-up. Here it again. Off the inbounds play. Best actually got the rebound. Little corner jumper by Sheravino, and that's good. Well, you know Sheravino's going to get his. He's off to a slow start, but I guarantee you he will get his points. First two points for the Catholic League MVP. He always had a knack for being around the basketball. His brother Anthony moved on after last year after graduating. So only one share of Eno for Mount Carmel this year. Into the lane. Breland lost the handle. And it was last touched by one of the members of the caravan. So what quick first step Breland has. He can get to the basket. I am really impressed, Kenny, with how many of the HF contingent that will watch their team play in game number two. They're already here and already got their seats and getting comfortable. Well, the bottom bowl is full. They had to open the upper deck. Krolak put it up, and the whistle blew before that second shot, and it will be two shots. The basket does not count. Our move of the quarter is brought to you by Cement IL. And it was a beautiful no-look pass by A.J. Thomas underneath to Hawkins. Well, look at the pass. What a great pass. See, Hawkins is underneath the backboard, so he had to do the reach back for the reverse layup. Move of the quarter is sponsored by our friends at ConcreteIL.com. Harper Krolak to the line. Already has six in the game after knocking down a couple of threes. Mount Carmel trying to make St. Pat's extend that defense just a little bit to give them a little room to operate. Boy, they're really pushing him back. Noah Mister, a long three, rebound best, and get a foul on the way up. It's going to be a two-shot foul. Wow, because he just looked like he lost the handle going up with the basketball. That foul is going to be on Hawkins. Best has done an outstanding job this quarter, Jim, on the offensive board. He has done a wonderful job on the offensive board. Now watch Best. See the angle. Offensive rebounding is all about angles. He knew the angle that ball was coming down to as he misses the first free throw. But what a great job of getting to the offensive board. Best has shown this quarter that he knows the angles and he can get to the board. R.J. McPartland back into the game for St. Pat's. Mount Carmel starting five has gone the whole way. Best makes the second free throw. Best off to a great start. Six points, three rebounds already. His team trails by six. Forty-three seconds to go. St. Pat's with the lead, and they will wait. Do not be surprised if they go just for one shot. Biggest lead of the game was nine. Could match that with a three-pointer in this possession. Krolak and Thomas. Twenty seconds. 
Get into it at about 10. Breland will be the man who determines when we get going here. Thomas in the lane, goes underneath, goes up high, couldn't get it. And the, took a while for the horn to go, but it finally went. Shot would have counted if it had gone. But an outstanding first quarter for St. Pat's. They led by as many as nine. At the break, they lead it over Mount Carmel, 16-10. Back with more in a moment. You're watching the game of the week on the U. Imagine going from the classroom to the big stage. This territory, this place, our home isn't just for learning but for understanding the very power of what imagination actually means. A place where you can go from player to coach, from the ground to the sky. So close your eyes, envision the roar that is a spirit of thousands of solutions. Capture this moment and go forward together. Hi, I'm Blake. And I'm Wendy, and we're Express Property Solutions. We're buying as-is houses for cash all across the area. We buy properties of all types, in any condition, and any price range. And pay cash fast whenever you need it. Don't worry about repairs. We buy houses as-is. And with no fees and closing costs. We'll make it quick and easy to sell your unwanted house. We're Express Property Solutions, and we want to make you a fair cash offer. Call 312-766-SOLD. Attention. Do you live with chronic knee pain? Is climbing the stairs, even standing up, frustrating and painful? Please note that knee replacement surgery is not your only option. A treatment is now available that is so effective, Medicare fully approved it, and it's not surgery. It's a lubricating gel that the highly trained doctors at the Joint Relief Institute gently place inside your knee, stimulating your body's ability to improve the cushioning inside the joint that you've lost over the years. We've treated over 20,000 patients, resulting in thousands of five-star Google reviews. People don't understand pain unless they really live with it. And the relief that these shots have given me is unbelievable. I have received treatment and walked out pain-free. It was quite awesome. Stop living in pain. Appointments are filling up fast, and the call is 100% free. Call today, 800-216-4294. Tonight's game is brought to you by ConcreteIL.com. Contact commercial contractors, explore past projects, and find a career at ConcreteIL.com. A rather enthusiastic student section from St. Pat's. Well, you can be that way. They lead by six. Yeah, they lead by six, and they are very enthusiastic. When we talked about best. I talked about what a great offensive rebounder is. He had three offensive rebounds that quarter. Has five of the ten total Mount Carmel rebounds in that quarter. St. Pat's had six field goals in that opening quarter. Just one turnover. On the other hand, Mount Carmel, three field goals and three turnovers. Yeah, you have to be strong with the basketball, especially against a good, well-coached team like St. Pat's. It has been exactly one month and one day since St. Patrick last lost the game. They were beaten by Maris back on February 3rd. I think was that the game I was at? I think so. I know I saw him play Maris. I don't know what day it was. <laughs> <laughs> I never know what day it is. Time to stand still for you, Kenny. St. Patrick will have the ball to open up quarter number two. Remember, later on tonight, when this one is done, we'll have the 4A super sectional matchup right here between Curie and Homewood Flossmoor. Number one versus number two. Didn't get much better than that. Thomas looks inside. Krolak was on the move and came down with it. Krolak, little push, lost the basketball. And then getting the foul was Cameron Thomas. That's his second. Yeah, and it looked like Thomas bailed him out because he had lost control of the basketball. Here was again. You can see Thomas right there. Yeah, Thomas got him on the arm. So Dylan Fulbright comes in for Thomas. And then Nathan Nano checks into the game for St. Patrick. He will replace E.J. Breland. Off the low post. Right hand and a little strong. 
going back to get his own rebound was Car or was Kavanaugh, and he missed that one as well. Yeah, Kavanaugh missed two easy shots. You're not going to see that very often. Let me check that. That was McPartland. So what you want to do now, if you're Mon Cromwell, you want to attack that zone, you do that by spacing and moving in basketball. Into the lane, best. Never came down to the floor, gave it to Sheravino, missed the shot. Nice rebound by Krolak after screening out. Well, that was a good offensive set. Nano gave a look like he might try it, did not. Ankle breaking drive by Thomas into the corner. Krolak for another three, didn't get it. Right. Thomas got the rebound. Long three pointer, missed by Kavanaugh. Yeah, those long rebounds, when you take those three pointers, Jimmy, you miss them, you know it's going to be a long rebound. Sheravino with only two points so far. You know that won't last long. He will get his. Best trying to get free, drew a double team instead. Here comes Mister into the lane, fights his way to the basket, couldn't hit the shot, and Nano watches the ball harmlessly bounce over the end line. St. Pat's gets it back, still holding that six-point lead that they held at the end of the first quarter. Yeah, this one-two-two zone really giving Mount Carmel fits. So what's the solution? The solution is A, you hit your outside jump shots. B, try to get the ball in the middle there, like uh, right below the free throw line, because that's where you have an opening. You need to space the floor, move the ball, and move your men have to move as well. St. Pat's moving nicely, but just moving the ball right now, not getting anywhere near ready to pull the trigger on a shot. That's what they do. Thomas into the lane, trying to back his way down. Four players collapsed on him. The ball came out, and somehow it ends up back in the hands of the St. Pat Shamrocks. Nano misses a three-pointer. Rebound in a reverse layup. That won't go. And Yuremovich got the rebound. He was tied up with McPartland. And it will be Mount Carmel basketball. Boy, look at everybody go to the board. Here's your three-point shot. Now you go up, long rebound. You missed the reverse layup. And sometimes, you know what? If you don't have that shot, just bring it back out. And there's your jump ball. St. Pat's three of eight shooting threes, which is right on the line of being okay. It's, it's acceptable. Not great, not bad, just okay. Yeah, move the ball. So if you give it to him right here, the right side. Mr. Fulbright in the bottom, they don't see him. And Best, they're all working it around. They move it quickly. Fulbright, three from the corner, got it. So off of the bench, Dylan Fulbright, the 5'10 junior, comes in and knocks down a three to make it a three-point game. Well, he's a better job, Jim, of spacing the floor and spreading the floor and moving the basketball against that zone. If you don't get ball movement and you just stand still, you're playing it in the hands of St. Pat's. Big turn on defense here for Mount Carmel. They got it to a one possession game. And that one rattled off the backboard, off the rim, and out off of the hand of Breland. Mount Carmel can tie it with a three. Boy, that ball did everything but fall. Boy, this Mount Carmel guys really have to stretch for some of these skip passes. Long three. That was for the tie. No good. And the rebound. Pulled off the glass by Kavanaugh. Well, St. Patrick have not scored a basket this quarter. They need a basket. Baseline flashed out. Breland got free. Let's go with a three and got it. Well, they needed that. And again, they do such a wonderful job of taking good shots, not the first shot. St. Pat's lead back to six. Sheravino looking to cut it in half. And Sheravino's had a tough night shooting from the outside so far. And we said we brought along a lot of extra help tonight. Well, Kenny and all, I also have Brandon Pope with us on the sidelines. Brandon? Hey, guys. There's no doubt if you're hearing this crowd, you're hearing the St. Patrick student section more than anything. I spoke with A.D. Matt Reardon about some of these students, and he tells me they're the most passionate bunch within the conference. You can see their energy. You can see their costumes. Funny thing, they have a Braveheart night. <laughs> Once every season, the kids dress up in costumes, borrow their girlfriend's skirts, paint their faces blue, do the speech and everything. Pretty incredible stuff. They're having a lot of fun. Are they going to fight and win? We'll find out. All right. Thank you very much, Brandon.
After tonight's basketball games, the IHSA Boys State Tournament continues on the UNCW 26. See the Class 1A through 4A semifinal matchups live Thursday and Friday on the U and the IHSA State Final Saturday on CW 26. Catch all the games on the U and CW 26. Three-pointers have been the story for St. Pat's tonight. They have knocked down four, two of them by Harper Krolak. That one right there by Cooper Cavanaugh. Yeah, you know what? They did a wonderful job. You drive the dish wide open, three-point shot. Here they come again, three-point shot. Shots, Jim, if you move the basketball, you get wide open, you're going to make your threes. Here we have another in the corner, nothing but net. You know, I'm thinking about what Brandon told us about Braveheart night. So you got, so because most of the Catholic schools, the girls' skirts are tartan patterns, you know, the, old, the Scottish tartans. Mm -hmm. So right away, you just, you've got to figure out a way how to borrow your sister's skirt. But I doubt many of those guys fit into their sister's <laughs> skirt. <laughs> so they got to make some adjustments. Hey, I'm just thrilled that we have the legendary, the legend Brandon Pope yes. with us today. That's, that's special. You know the big game when Brandon Pope comes out to be with us. St. Pat's by six. Into the lane. Cavanaugh dumped it off on the baseline. Boy, they have had problems with that reverse layup yeah, under the glass. You know McFarland missed another one. He could have just went straight up. There was no need for the reverse. Cheravino gets to the basket. Couldn't get it to drop, but he will get a chance to go to the line. Yeah, sometimes the nice, simple play works. Go up, dunk the basketball. Well, right to your living room. Here they come. Well, see, good things happen when you attack the basket. I always say that, Jim. Because you're right. Boy, Mount Carmel looking a little tight, Kenny. And Phil Seagrove, I'm sure, is seeing the same thing. You don't think Angelo missed many free throws. This guy's got to relax. Got the second one. Sherabino with three. The lead is five. Mount Carmel four of six from the line. Breland into the front court. Down the lane. Kavanaugh got around his man and had the nice spin off the glass to get it. Yeah, the nice spin off the glass. A little reverse layup over his head. Cooper Cavanaugh with five. Low block, Yurevich to Mister into the corner. Best, 15-footer, got it. Well, Best has been standing over that right corner, and if they can get him to basketball, he could cause a lot of trouble for St. Patrick's. Grant Best has half of the Mount Carmel points. Krolak and Mister out the top right now. Krolak again, feeds the post. McPartland pushed off the block just a little bit. But look at the ball pressure on defense. Freeland trying to find some open space. Had a hard time getting a breather on that one. Yeah, Montgomery doing a wonderful job here at this switch. A.J. Thomas had it knocked away by Noah Mister, and Noah Mister we got part of the hand. Yeah, they switched everything, Jim, at the top of the key when they were coming around on that uh, weave. And then you get the foul with the arm. So Fulbright is going to get the foul as he reached right as A.J. Jackson went up. A.J. Thomas, excuse me. Third free throw of the game for St. Pat's. They've missed two of them. Boy, that could come back and really hurt you. you know, this could be crucial at the end of the game. Yuremovich comes out and going back in with his two personal fouls is Cameron Thomas with 2.05 to go in the first half. Second free throw by Thomas was good. 6 point margin for St. Pat's. Another 1-3-1. One, one. Then they drop back to a 2-1-2. Two, two. 
So they could kind of mix it up a little bit. Mister thought about driving the lane and just three St. Pat's green jerseys collapsed on him. And on the baseline, even though he is claiming verticality, that's going to be number two on E.J. Breland. Yeah, a little bit of a bump in and trying to cut off the baseline. E.J. Breland is second. And no activity in the St. Pat's bullpen. Nope, here we go. Here we go. Anthony Fabio is going to check in the game. You would have to assume that's for Breland, and it is. Well, with 142 remaining, and you have the lead, you don't want Breland picking up his third foul. St. Pat's has led the whole way so far. Best was looking for the cutter in the back and instead just turned it over, was trying to get it to Sheravino. Minute and a half to go. And Mike Bailey says, slow down. And what does this team do? Turn it over. Oh, and that's not going to make the coach happy. Nope, nope, not at all. When he says slow it down, as soon as he put his hands up to slow it down, <laughs> right. they threw it away. Threw it into the corner. Not what they wanted. Mount Carmel has a couple of three-pointers in the game. Grant Best and Dylan Fulbright, each with one. A three-pointer here would cut the lead in half. Yeah. Yeah. Mister. Corner of the lane. What a beautiful dish underneath. Got it to Grant Best. Give Mister the assist. Best the basket. Best will go to the line and one. What an assist by Mister. Well, he got through traffic, drops it off. Doing a great job getting through the traffic that time. So Mister's going to be at the line. So the basket does not count. The, the foul came before. Mr. Pass the basketball. Missed the free throw. Let's take a look at this. Now, here's Mr. with the ball. I guess the foul is right there before he dishes off the basketball to best. Mr. knocks in the second free throw. Uremovich comes back into the game. Cameron Thomas will go out. Shamrock's basketball. Krolak from the foul line couldn't hit. Rebound underneath by Thomas, and he had the ball knocked out of his hands. Marquee Sports Network and CW26 are taking you out to the ball game. Catch the Cubs live from spring training against the Brewers Tuesday, March 12th, beginning at 8 on CW26. And remember, you can watch the Cubs all season long by subscribing directly to Marquee Sports Network and streaming on the Marquee Sports Network app. For more information, visit watchmarquee.com. Go Cubs, go. It's that time of year, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Would have been a good day today with Chicago for a baseball team. Beautiful day today. Day. So you know what that means, Kenny. It's going to snow. Opening day, it's going to be 35 <laughs> degrees. With snow. Right, exactly. Today was just a big tease. 40 seconds to go in the half. Mount Carmel trying to slice into this lead a little bit before the break. Sheravino with a move. Couldn't get free. Loose ball. Here come the Shamrocks again. And uh, I'm not really too sure how. That's not a turnover when you pass it to yourself, but must have gotten touched. One shot time? I would think so because St. Pat's has gotten a little bit loose with the ball handling here late in the second quarter. Krolak with the basketball. Kavanaugh. Thomas. Crossover. Lost the handle. Best. Can he get the handle and get rid of it? Yes. Counts if it goes. Got it. Three-pointer at the buzzer for Grant Best. His second three-pointer. He had 11 points in that opening half. And at the buzzer, Mount Carmel cuts the lead from seven down to four. And mark that down. That may be the play of the game. That could be a huge play. Hit it again with the turnover. Now, Best is looking up at the clock. See, he looks up at the clock. So instead of keep dribbling, he pulls up from the three-point mark. Puts it down. It's good. Now, it's right to your living room. See, he looks up. He sees he has a couple of seconds. Instead of trying to beat the clock, he pulls up for the three-point shot. 
Mark that down. That could be the play of the game. We talked about when St. Pat's got the ball toward the end there. They've been a little bit sloppy with the basketball. They turn it over. That leads to the bucket. 24-20, St. Pat's at the half. Whether you're looking for a commercial concrete contractor, exploring a future career, or interested in learning from past projects, the Cement Masons LMCC has the resources you need to connect you with the best in the union concrete industry. We maintain a vetted network of union concrete contractors to get your job done right. You can learn more at ConcreteIL.com. To everyone who believes in tradition, come enjoy a few of ours from Wisconsin. People in Wisconsin love a good fish fry. Really love. And we love sharing it with guests everywhere. At Culver's, we still batter our North Atlantic cod by hand to order. And we cook it to a crispy, golden perfection just for you. For you. For you. So it's crispy outside, flaky inside. Let us take care of you. With some homegrown traditions we were raised on. From Wisconsin with love. Welcome to Delicious. Why did we choose Safe Flight? We're always working on a project. While loading up our SUV, one extra push and crack. So we scheduled at safeflight.com. We were able to track our technician and knew exactly when he'd arrive. We could keep working. Safe Flight came to us. Hi, I'm Kendrick. Replaced our windshield and installed new wipers to protect our new glass. That service on our time. Safe Flight Repair, Safe Flight Replace. A season comes down to one game, one moment, one shot. Get the time has come for the IHSA Boys Basketball State Finals. Watch the semifinal games Thursday and Friday starting at 9.30 on the U and the championship game Saturday starting at 11 on CW26. History will be written and champions will be crowned on CW26 and the U. All right, welcome to halftime. The score, St. Patrick's 24, the Caravan of Mount Carmel 20 for this game of the week. All right, we are learning to win and talking about the boom in flag football, especially for girls throughout Illinois high schools. This is a big thing in here. I've got uh, Mickey Pruitt with the director of CPS Sports Administration and Juliana Zavala with the high school uh, girls flag football program. So first of all, thanks for being here. Uh, Mickey, I'm going to start with you. Uh, you play for the Chicago Bears. Can you talk a little bit about um, what the process was like, getting the Bears involved and getting this to fruition here so that girls can have a hand in playing some sports here. One of our favorite sports football yeah one of the things that we want to have a little bit more sports for the female athletes yeah. in the school and and once um gus silver came to me about um, flag football we wanted to bring it to the um, cps and then Julian Zavala was the perfect person to have um, to start flag football for CPS. Now, Juliana, this is already in place for a lot of teams already, but it's kind of ramped up to get approval. Talk about that fast tracking and how it's kind of like rare to see something get approved so fast like this. Absolutely. I mean, this is uh, one of the things that grew so quickly. We started our first season here in 2021 with 22 schools, and then year two, it just kind of grew the social media the girls really enjoyed having it and we you know went out to the suburbs and now we have 60 teams and then going into year three we grew them with more than 100 teams and it's just so rapid and it's just goes to show that this is a sport that the girls wanted it was just a matter of getting someone to do it and thanks to the partnership from the chicago bears we were able to make it happen talk to me a little bit about the response that you've seen so far from the girls they're loving it right they're loving it. They're ready to get ready to go. We've been seeing more schools now that it's been sanctioned here. This has been great, especially for women in sports. The girls have a league of their own. So we're excited to see that they're no longer going to play home, uh, you know, like the powder puff during homecoming now that they get to have uh, their own game. So it's, re it's really, really exciting to see and exciting to see that the girls now can say that they play football as well. All right, uh, that, that, that does it here for this halftime discussion here. Going to toss it back over uh, more with Kenny uh, and, and the team over here uh, after this.
What if you could whiten your teeth by simply brushing your teeth? Now you can with Smile Actives, the teeth whitening breakthrough that safely gets your teeth white and keeps them white every day just by brushing your teeth. I never thought that whitening my teeth could be so easy. I just put the gel on the brush, the toothpaste on it, brush, and I can see my white teeth. Simply add Smile Actives to any toothpaste and our patented PolyClean technology activates into a powerful microfoam that penetrates into the enamel surface to safely lift and remove stains. You need a simple way to whiten your teeth without strips, without trays, without going to the dentist. And it was about time that a product was developed that you would be able to do that with just brushing. And now Smile Actives is even better with new Pro Whitening Gel with 33% greater whitening power, clinically shown to whiten teeth faster, up to eight shades. 100% of users saw whiter teeth on food stains, coffee and wine stains, even on veneers, crowns, and dentures. I eat the blueberries, I drink the coffee, and I know that Smile Actives will keep my teeth white every day. If you could use something so easy like Smile Actives to take yellow teeth to white teeth, why wouldn't you? Why spend hundreds of dollars for whitening treatments at the dentist when now you can whiten your teeth with new Smile Actives Pro Whitening Gel every time you brush your teeth? Call or go to smileactives.com and for a limited time, get new Pro whitening gel for just $24.95. Order in the next five minutes and buy one, get one absolutely free for just $24.95. That's two for one and save 58%. We'll even include free shipping. Get your teeth whiter guaranteed or return it within 60 days for your money back. I smile every day now. <laughs> The difference is literally night and day. So now I'm always smiling, always choosing, because now my teeth are much whiter. This offer is not available in stores, so call or click now before the special buy one, get one free offer goes away. Tonight's game is brought to you by SIU. Imagine the possibilities. SIU Carbondale. St. Pat leads Mount Carmel here by four. We are at halftime, and I'm joined now a little friendly competition. We have Matthew Reardon, the athletic director at St. Pat, and then John Grubasich, the athletic director at Mount Carmel. Guys, thank you for being here. This is a great game so far. Matthew, I'll start with you. 1,300 wins between two coaches. Such successful programs here. The longevity, obviously, a big part of that. Yeah, no, it's incredible. Um, very fortunate to have that. Um, we started with Max Curlin in 1959, and, and Coach Bailey took over in 1994. Uh, he just celebrated his 650th win on Friday for a sectional champ, and that uh, makes my job easy, that's for sure. Absolutely, and there's some new career curriculum for student-athletes. Tell us more about those yeah, options. Yeah, we're, we're really excited. Um, you know, we started this um, it's um, career technical education, CTE. Um, major renovations to our school building and our complex have put that in. Um, and, you know, it, it prepares kids for the future after high school, whether it's in engineering, whether it's in the trades and all that. So it's, we're really excited about that, to offer that to him. Thank you, Matthew. I'll turn things over here to John. Thank you, John, for being here as well. Your program's no stranger to success as well. Football, basketball, you name it. Talk about some of the success that you've seen in your time here as AD. Well, you know, we're incredibly blessed. Uh, our athletic director, Coach Seagroves, myself, and Mary Mann, um, our assistant athletic director. In the last year, we've won a state championship in football and in wrestling. Uh, and that brings our total to 28 as a school. Uh, but we're also incredibly proud of some of our other sports success and some of our clubs that uh, go on as well. Uh, chess uh, had a t finish in the top quarter in, in 2A uh, of the schools that competed. Uh, our eSports League um, finished second in the state in Rocket League. Uh, so we just been, you know, the, the kids that come into Mount Carmel, they're willing to put in the effort and the success to, uh, to, to, to have it work out for them in the end. Absolutely. I'm ready to cover a chess championship. That sounds pretty <laughs> good. Thank you both for being here. We'll be back with more of the Game of the Week on the U. To make money in my business, you have to be willing to do whatever it takes. Buy low, sell high, and keep the goods moving. I am a liquidator. Weekdays at 12 and 12.30 on the U. Attention. Do you live with chronic knee pain? Is climbing the stairs, even standing up, frustrating and painful? Please note that knee replacement surgery is not your only option. A treatment is now available that is so effective, Medicare fully approved it, and it's not surgery. 
It's a lubricating gel that the highly trained doctors at the Joint Relief Institute gently place inside your knee, stimulating your body's ability to improve the cushioning inside the joint that you've lost over the years. We've treated over 20,000 patients, resulting in thousands of five-star Google reviews. People don't understand pain unless they really live with it. And the relief that these shots have given me is unbelievable. I've received treatment and walked out pain-free. It was quite awesome. Stop living in pain. Appointments are filling up fast, and the call is 100% free. Call today, 800-216-4294. Get beautiful new floors right now with Luna's incredible 70% off sale. That's carpet, laminate, and even hardwood, 70% off. You'll get professional installation and can be confident with Luna's exclusive Love Your Floors promise. Transform your home with an amazing 70% off carpet, laminate, and hardwood. Reserve your free in-home appointment at Luna.com or call 773-202-LUNA. Somebody has to be lying. Either you're telling me the truth or you're not. Everything I'm telling is the honest to God truth. You guys have a lie detector? We're the lie detector. Hot Bench. Weekdays at 9 and 9.30 on CW26. Halftime in this 3A super sectional matchup. A little bit of a surprise. St. Pat's leading number six ranked Mount Carmel 24 to 20. Jim Blaney and Kenny McReynolds back with you from Credit Union One Arena on the campus of UIC. Let's go get a look at some of the highlights from the opening half of action. Mount Carmel fell behind right off the hop. By the way, the highlights are brought to you by Southern Illinois University Carbondale. Early on, Cameron Thomas got Mount Carmel on the board, but it was three-point shooting by St. Patrick, especially by Cooper Cavanaugh, that got them going early. And they did a wonderful job of spreading the floor, great spacing to get those open shots. But then the caravan decided, hey, look, we have to attack this zone. Angelo Sheravino only had three points during that opening half, and Mount Carmel got a little bit of a spike or a spark when Dylan Fulbright came in, knocked in a three-pointer off the bench, but Breland for St. Pat's comes right back with a three. St. Pat's led by as many as nine in that opening half, but here was the big difference at the buzzer to end the half after a St. Pat's turnover. Grant Best hits a three-pointer, and that is where we stand at the half with a six-point margin. Halftime highlights brought to you by SIU Carbondale. Kenny and I are back with the second half right after this timeout. Hey, everyone. Emerald Lagasse here, and I'm so excited to tell you about my biggest air fryer yet. Introducing Emerald Lagasse's Dual Zone Air Fryer Oven with dual-sided cooking chambers. Now you can cook two different foods two different ways that finish at the same time. No more back-to-back -back cooking. Now main dish and sides finish at the same time. Enjoy juicy grilled burgers at the same time as air-fried french fries. Broiled savory salmon at the same time as roasted asparagus. Broiled chicken parm finishes at the same time as baked cheesy garlic bread. The secret is in the quick sync technology that matches the cooking times and settings of each food, so they're programmed to finish at the same time. I tell you, I cannot recommend this enough. It comes out perfect every single time. It's awesome. But watch. Remove the center divider and it transforms into a large 25-quart capacity oven for delicious family-sized Monday to Sunday meals that cook up to 60% faster. Slow cook a pot of mama's meatballs, delicious savory chili, or bake the Easiest homemade bread without turning on that big oven. You can even cook right from the freezer. Mozzarella sticks from frozen to ooey gooey in minutes. Or frozen shrimp to sizzling scampi in just 10 minutes. Now you can try Emerald Lagasse's 25 quart dual zone air fryer oven with dual cooking chamber, removable oven divider, and toasting rack in your home for 30 days for just $14.99. But wait, you also get Emerald's free downloadable dual zone recipe book. Order now and we'll automatically upgrade you to his deluxe cooking kit absolutely free. Complete with two baking sheets, two crisper baskets, large baking sheet, the grill plate, the rotisserie spit and fetch tool, plus a 100% satisfaction guarantee and a one-year VIP protection plan. Plus, ask how you can get free shipping. This offer will not last, so order now. You're going to love it. I guarantee it. Call 1-800-553-6950. That's 1-800-553-6950.
Welcome back to Credit Union One Arena on the campus of the University of Illinois at Chicago. You're watching the game of the week on the U. This is a 3A boys super sectional matchup between Mount Carmel and St. Pat's. Mount Carmel coming in as the number one seed, winner of their sectional. St. Pat's the number two seed, obviously winner of theirs. Mount Carmel ranked number six in the Chicagoland area by Michael O'Brien of the Chicago Sun-Times, but yet it is the Shamrocks looking for their first trip ever downstate that have the lead at the half, and Kenny Bell get the ball to open up the second half. Well, I will say this, that last play to end the half may be the play of the game. Mark that down. If St. Pat's had hit a three on that possession, they would have been up by 10. Instead, they turned it over. Grant Best hit a three, and it's a four-point margin right now for St. Pat's. A.J. Thomas into the lane. Try to spin back to the middle. Turned it over. Gave it away. Sheravino down the floor. He'll jam it home. And now it's a two-point game. And now you know why he's the Catholic League player of the year. You notice the way he jumped right into the passing lane. And look how fast he was down court for the dunk. Think of the last two possessions. Two turnovers by St. Pat's. A three-pointer at the buzzer and a dunk. Yep, five points. Mount Carmel has never led. In fact, they've never even been tied in this game except for when it was 0-0. Three-pointer on the way. Breland got knocked over. No call. Mount Carmel can tie with a two. Great catch by Thomas. Jordan Lynch would have been happy with that one. And we are tied. I was going to say, he looked like a wide receiver there. This, this is exactly what the caravan needed. Thomas trying to battle his way to the basket. Didn't get there. Into the corner. Here's Breland. Thomas on Krolak. Thomas off the low block, got it. He quick, what a quick first step. He was able to go with the left hand and get to the left side of the basket. A.J. Thomas with nine. Now St. Pat goes back to the zone. Thomas fires it into the corner. Noah Mister made a great catch because coming out was Kavanaugh. Mister underneath hey. Sheravino jams another one home. But what a pass by Mister. The no look spin pass and the Catholic League Player of the Year standing by himself in the paint. Tied at 26. Sheravino with a block. Well, it, it looked like Hawkins wasn't sure whether he wanted to dunk it or not. You better be sure. Three pointer Breland couldn't get it. Tapped out. Mount Carmel basketball with 5.35 to go here in the third quarter. Well, the third quarter is exactly what we thought this ball game would be. Let's check in with Casey Standahar. Casey? Guys, Caravan head coach Phil Seagroves reminded his team in the break to box out. He also said, we shoot good shots at Mount Carmel. Don't forget it. He told his guys to calm down. He said, we're fine. We just need to weather the storm and knock down shots. As for St. Pat's coach Mike Bailey, he put it eloquently saying, the Caravan aren't going to lose this game. We have to be the ones to go win it. All right, Casey, thank you very much. That's a winning play right there. Hawkins coming up with a block. Big block. I like that. We have to go win it. Right. And what Phil Segro said is something we noticed. Sheravino had that shot blocked and then got fouled. Phil Segro said something that we had noticed where Mount Carmel just looked a little tight. Yeah, they really did. That foul is on Hawkins, and that is his third. His third. Team's first. See if Mike Bailey goes to the bench to get Hawkins out of there. He wanted to talk to Prolak first. Seven points for Sheravino, and it's been a little bit of a struggle from the line early. That's his third free throw. He's missed two. Which is unusual for him to miss that many free throws. Here is again a nice inbound play. play. You can see the foul right there. That was an inbound play for him to cut to the basket, throw it up, and try to just tip it in. Sheravino's now missed three out of four. Breland with the rebound. Well, you don't see that very often. He's a Excellent three, uh, free throw shooter. Mount Carmel is a team five of ten from the line. 
And Kavanaugh was kind of scumbling his way to the basket, got grabbed by Sheravino on the way through. That's his first. In, in a close game like this, especially a championship game, Jim, free throw shooting could really play a big part. But isn't it interesting, Kenny, how the free throws are not as big of a deal now that we've gone to the 5-5-5. Five, five, five. Exactly. <laughs> that pass was more toward Nick Pinto, our stats extraordinaire keeper. <laughs> Than it was to anybody in the same hands hands that. He had his hands ready. Right, he was ready. He was triple threat position. Triple threat. Mount Carmel for their first lead of the game. Cameron Thomas, wide open. Noah Mister for the lead. Couldn't get it. And rebound by Thomas. Good battle underneath one by A.J. Thomas. That was a great tip. Breland down the lane. Goes up. That is unbelievable. The English should put on that to get it in. Yeah, I can't believe it. Hey, he was able to get through with that step. He could maybe get through the defense and then the English to get the ball to fall. Breland with five. Shamrocks by two. Sheravino for the lead. Couldn't get it. And the rebound pulled down by Hawkins. So the Catholic League player of the year trying to take control for the caravan. Breland lets it fly. Got it. Well, you know why he let that fly? Because Thomas put his hands down. Thomas put his hands down. Hands down. Ball up, baby. Back to a five-point lead for St. Pat's. Uremovich, <laughs> low block. Big crowd really getting into it. Uremovich battling his way in. Best underneath Sherabino's making a living on short shots this quarter. Yeah, you see the way he came from the right side, snuck into the paint, and put his hands up, and they saw him. Easy layup. Sheravino had three at the half. He has nine right now. He's going to be a big time recruit for Chris Collins in Northwestern. A perfect fit, if I do say so myself. I, I agree. Freeland explodes to the basket. A little bit strong in shot. Best with the rebound. Yeah, if he just lays, lays that up gingerly, he has two points. Sheravino from the foul line knew he had missed it, chased his shot. The rebound comes to Thomas. Well, when you shoot the ball, you know it was off. Yeah, you know right away. And he knew right away as he goes right to the board to try to get the offensive board, board. The pace has really, really picked up here in the second half. Almost stolen away by Sheravino. Long three-pointer Kavanaugh couldn't hit. Krolak saved it. What a play by Best. He ducked right as Krolak tried to bounce it off his head. And it results in a turnover. Sheravino for the foul line. Missed it. What? Yeah. Breland says, okay. okay we've, we've seen enough. <laughs> <laughs> enough of this. In fact, Mike Bailey's going to call a timeout with 2.34 to go. Well, you said the pace has really picked up here in the third quarter, and that is to Mount Carmel's advantage. Move of the quarter is sponsored by our friends at ConcreteIL.com. And Angelo Sheravino has had a lot of short-distance shots here. And here he is, jumping to the passing lane for the layup and the slam dunk. Coming into your living room, getting offense from your defense right there. Jump into the passing lane with the left hand. Turns on the afterburners, beats everybody down for for the slam dunk. Showing why he was the Lawless Award winner and the Catholic League Player of the Year. Move of the quarter sponsored by ConcreteIL.com. So Mount Carmel had tied it at one point. They still have never had the lead. They're down by one possession right now. Winner of this game will face the winner of Mount Zion and Centralia. That'll come up on Friday, early in the evening in the 3A semis. And of course, coming up after this game, we have another one for you. We have the 4A super sectional, number one Curie, number two Homewood Flossmoor. And you take a look at the big crowd tonight. I want to say, Kenny, the last time that you and I did a Mount Carmel playoff game was at Proviso East. It was Mount Carmel and Whitney Young. Mm -hmm. It was a, I believe that was a regional final? No, it was a section final. Yes. And that was the game where Mount Carmel, better known as linebacker, but also basketball player Steve, Steve Fyler. 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 It just laid the biggest hit he probably put on all year, football or basketball, on Marcus Jordan. And Marcus Jordan jumped right up and went to the free throw line and hit his free throw. Yeah, I, I thought he knocked him out cold. <laughs> that, 
That was one of the most physical games I've ever seen and physical things. Well, that's Jordan Lynch and his family. They love, yeah. they love seeing that. Oh, yes. State champions. Yes, two years in a row. Last time we saw Mount Carmel on the U, it was the uh, playoff game between Mount Carmel and Batavia in the semifinals. And then Mount Carmel went on the Saturday after Thanksgiving to win their second straight state title. Got a few of those football trophies yeah. in that cabinet at Mount Carmel. Three-pointer on the way. Breeland down the bottom of the drain. His third three-pointer of the night. Well, like I said in the open, Breeland has really carried this team during this playoff stretch. Trying to answer is Thomas, and he does. He better get out there and rotate and put a hand up on the, in his face. You can't give him a wide-open shot, and I think that's why the coach is saying, hey, get back in there. He's going to come back with Cooper Cavanaugh, who, by the way, last year played for Mount Carmel. He transferred to St. Pat's. Shooter starting to warm up in this game. Minute and a half to go in that quarter, and ball will stay with St. Pat's. And underneath the basket where they're shooting, our good buddy Rob Smith, the former Simeon coach. Isn't it amazing how after all the stops and starts that Simeon had this year, they ended up in a section final. Yeah, Tim did a great job. Rob handpicked Tim to, to replace him, Tim Flowers. So he knew what he was doing. Breland open for the three. Didn't get it. Rebound by Noah Mister. So this gives St. Pat's a chance to go back to that zone. What percentage of Tim Flowers' baskets in his career at Simeon were assisted by Derek Rose, do you think? 95. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of them. St. Pat's leading by three. A little tall. That's hard to do when you're throwing it to R.J. McPartland, who's a 6'6 six, six sophomore. Yeah, and you know what they want to do? Just, like, be strong with the ball. You see Coach Bader put his hands up. Be strong with it. Relax. 105 to go here in the third quarter. This has been a rapid third quarter. The pace has been amazing. Will Mount Carmel spring into action, or will they wait and see how St. Patrick decides to play defense? Well, St. Patrick's going to stay back in the zone. They're not going to come out. Mister for three. That went off the back of the iron. Now, watch St. Patrick go for one shot. And that is exactly what Mike Bailey wants his guys to do. Right, because he loves to run his offense. He does not want to make this a track meet. They turned it over on the final possession of the second quarter. And it, at the time, it looked like a pivotal moment. Stolen away by Noah Mister. He'll go in. Count the bucket. He'll go to the line. What is it about the end of the quarter for the caravan? What a great pick by Mister. Used his quickness to strip the ball away. Watch how he just strips the ball away. Look at his hand right there. The right hand, he just takes it away, goes down court. Now, watch the contact. Strong enough to get it up, a little bit of English, and now he's at the line for a three-point opportunity. But look at the quick hand. The right hand goes to the outside, goes to the outside, takes it with the right hand. There's your contact and the basket. Tied for the second time in the game. Another big play at the end of the quarter for the caravan. 12 seconds left. Six seconds. Thomas goes airborne, couldn't get it, rebound, blocked. And Mr. did not, would not have counted anyway, so that will bring an end to the third quarter. So, it took a while for Mount Carmel to get there, but at the end of this quarter, we are tied. 34-34. Eight minutes. Who knows? Maybe more to decide who advances downstate. Whether you're looking for a commercial concrete contractor, exploring a future career, or interested in learning from past projects, the Cement Masons LMCC has the resources you need to connect you with the best in the union concrete industry. We maintain a vetted network of Union Concrete contractors to get your job done right. You can learn more at ConcreteIL.com. Imagine going from the classroom to the big stage. 
this territory, this place, our home, isn't just for learning, but for understanding the very power of what imagination actually means. A place where you can go, from player to coach, from the ground to the sky. So close your eyes, envision the roar that is a spirit of thousands of solutions. Capture this moment and go forward together. Driving without auto insurance can have serious legal and financial consequences. Here at Lincoln Insurance Agency, we help customers find the best rate, the best coverage for that individual. Having been in business for over 67 years, the experts at Lincoln Insurance Agency know a thing or two about auto insurance. Established in 1955, and the customer service is the same now that it was then. Call Lincoln Insurance today to make sure that you are insured the right way. Direct. Don't you ever look up at the sky and roll your eyes. You hear me? Yes. Yeah, good. Realistic. I will maybe have a tendency Spend to Spend too much and won't be able to pay your rent. That's the problem. He holds the line. I resent it, and I resent you for doing it. Powerful. I don't know where you've been, but you're going to respect this courtroom. I'm going to throw you out real quick. Mathis Court is in session. Weekdays at 3 and 3.30 on CW26. Tonight's game is brought to you by ConcreteIL.com. Contact commercial contractors, explore past projects, and find a career at ConcreteIL.com. The Mount Carmel cheerleaders, something to cheer about. Their team has rallied from down by as many as nine, and we're dead even going to the fourth quarter, Kenny. Well, we knew it would be a great ball game. These two teams have had a great season, and Mount Carmel did a great job, Jim, of coming back. They outscored St. Patrick's 14 to 10 in that quarter. In the second quarter, they outscored them 10 to 8. They've done a great job. St. Patrick's did not get to the free throw line in the third quarter. Some of the uh, Curie faithful making their way into the building. And anytime Mount Carmel plays, you get a lot of alums going back. Oh, yeah. Many, many years in some cases. Yeah. Watching the caravan. Big crowd on hand. The upper deck is almost full. The lower bowl is totally full. And of course, we're joined by the great Brandon Pope. So where would you want to be? Yeah, this is when you have two games in one venue. This is when it's full, the fourth quarter, the first game, because you've got obviously all the people here for the first game. Right. And then all the people for the second game want to try and get a better seat. So they arrive early as well. So everybody's here. All four schools playing tonight. Look at St. Pat's student section. <laughs> They're having a good time. Mount Carmel has the ball first as we begin this fourth quarter of play. St. Pat stays in the zone. Uremovich. Had that one roll off the rim on him. Ball goes out of bounds. There's no foul call. A lot of contact. Right. Here's again, moving the ball around. Wonderful job against the zone. Boy, a lot of contact going underneath the basket. The referee said, let them play. And as long as you're consistent, nobody can complain. Mount Carmel still has never led. A.J. Thomas. Keeps battling his way, got free, and then got grabbed on to Best was in the neighborhood, and Grant Best picks up the foul. Ball pulled against the caravan, number three, Grant Best. Well, then watch Best right there with the hook, right there with the little hip, little hip check. Shamrock's basketball. Harper Krolak with the basketball. Breland had it. Almost taken away by Fulbright. Then it's Kavanaugh, free throw line jumper that won't go. Uremovich and Kavanaugh battle for the rebound. Uremovich came down with it. So now Lamar Carmel will take their time. Mister for three. Couldn't get it. Tipped by Best. Knocked around. Finally corralled and taken down by Hawkins. Well, a big rebound by Hawkins because he just reached out and grabbed it. Breland wide open for a three, couldn't hit it. Hawkins has spent a lot of time on the bench tonight in foul trouble. He's out there with three fouls right now. Still tied at 34. 
You're right, are checked at. Cherubino in the corner. Couldn't hit it. Cherubino gets it back. Goes up and didn't get the bucket, but got fouled. Did he get fouled in the act? Well, he missed his shot and went right for the board. We talked about it earlier. You know when your shot is off. Here it is again, Jim. So he knows this shot is off. He goes right to the offensive board, and then he gets the shot right here. There's your foul. That's four. Nevaeh Hawkins with foul number four. Sheravino on the line where he's just one of four so far tonight. And for the first time tonight, Mount Carmel has the lead. And your mindset and your play changes. Everything changes when you have the lead. Because now you're not chasing. They have to chase you. And you saw Hawkins go out of the game. Sheridino picked a good time to hit two in a row. Hey, don't tell me how many you made. Tell me when you made them. Did you get a chance to watch any of the uh, one in three A girls yes, last week? Yes, I did. Did you get to hear me say you have to dance with the lady you brought to the disco? Yeah, with the lady you brought to the disco. <laughs> I'm very good at stealing your best material. Well, that's okay. We've been together a long time. I was going to say, after 20 plus years, you can steal it. We think it like. Which is a frightening thought. Right, exactly. <laughs> oh, look at quick step. What a beautiful job of showing the ball, pulling it in, and laying it in. A.J. Thomas with 11, and we're tied at 36. Again, what a great first step to get to the basket. Sherabino. Pass to Mister, ran into traffic, sidestep, Thomas, three-pointer, got it, Mount Carmel by three. You can't leave them open like that. They did a great job, again, of spreading the floor. You had men down in the paint, Thomas wide open, Jim. you got to rotate back out. Second three-pointer for Thomas, he has ten in the game, in the corner, three-pointer on the way, Krolak couldn't hit, ball rattling around, Thomas got the rebound. Into the lane, tough shot for Breland, couldn't get it. And the rebound pulled off the glass by Yurinovich. Now, let's see if the caravan, if they slow it down, because now they have the lead. They have never had a two-possession lead in this game. 5-11 to go in the fourth quarter. Wide open. Mister for three. That one was long. Oh, what, a, what a rebound, but... He came down out of bounds. Right. Came down on the end line. Goes right back to St. Pat. Thomas just went flying to the offensive board. He just cleared a lot of people out of the way, but he came down on the line. St. Pat's one for five from the field here in the fourth quarter. And we've played three and change in this fourth. Thomas has Best right on top of him. Oh, look at the ball pressure by Best. Oh, Thomas again shows the basketball and just keeps going to the hoop and gets another one. Did a great job of showing the basketball, but does a better job of getting to the hoop with that speed and quickness. 13 points for A.J. Thomas. Caravan by one. Cameron Thomas. Sherabino. Baseline. Picked up his dribble. Got it to Mister. And stepping on the sideline that time was Cameron Thomas. Well, it's so easy to say, but you really have to know where you are on the court at all times. Hawkins back into the game for St. Pat's. Remember, he has four fouls. Team foul situation. Mount Carmel with two so far. St. Pat's with one. Remember, it's five fouls per quarter now. And when you go into the bonus, it's just two shots. No more one and one. Breland with the basketball, gave it to Thomas. Breland will shoot a three, couldn't get it. Long three. And after the loose ball, a grab, and that might be on Thomas. I think it will be Thomas. And if it is on Thomas, it's his third. Now watch after the shot, Jim. Watch Thomas, see what the coach would say. Look, he didn't have to throw him down. He had the basketball. You had no chance of getting the ball. Those are the kind of fouls that would give Coach Gray here. He was like, look, he already was about to pick up the ball. No need to push him. It was indeed on Thomas. Loose ball off the inbounds play. Thomas came up with it. Sheravino in the open floor, and looks like he really doesn't want to handle the basketball. Wants to get it to somebody. Got it to Thomas. And then Sheravino got it back, and that is going to be it for Hawkins. Wow. 
Wow, he was not on the floor very much tonight. No. Tough foul. Tough way to foul out. And there is the horn that signals that Hawkins has to come out of the game. He's trying to act like he doesn't know it. <laughs> you might as well make the official come fish you out. Come get me. And that means that R.J. McPartland will come back into the game. Hawkins, a junior, but he's really hoping there's at least one more game to play. Actually, you win this one, you're guaranteed a two more, but you don't want to be in the third place no. game. An errant pass. Scooped up by Breland. Breland in the lane, passes it off, Krolak got it. Well, he saw him right there running with him. St. Pat's back on top by one, three and a half to go. Best. Mister, triple team, got out of it. Best for three, got it. Well, caravan by two. If you're gonna triple team the ball like that, you gotta rotate back out. You can't leave him that wide open. St. Pat takes the timeout. Grant Best with 14 and has two huge three-pointers in this game. Yeah, you got to rotate back out. They did a great job of triple teaming the basketball. You triple team the ball in the paint, but then you leave him best wide open. So somebody's got to shoot right back out. Early in this half, Angelo Sheravino came alive. Only had three points in the opening half, but this is what got him going. Well, he's a Catholic League Player of the Year. He won the Lawless Award for a reason. This is the reason. Not only playing great offense, but great defense as he jumped into the passing lane. He does a wonderful job, but what a nice pass there. Puts it down again for the caravan of Mount Carmel. Sheravino with eight points here in the second half. Marquee Sports Network and CW26 are taking you out to the ball game. Catch the Chicago Cubs live from spring training against the Milwaukee Brewers. That's coming up on Tuesday, March 12th, beginning at 8 on CW26. Remember, you can watch the Cubs all season long by subscribing directly to Marquee Sports Network and streaming on the Marquee Sports Network app. For more information, visit watchmarquee.com. All right, there you take a look at the bench of St. Pat's. Caravan haven't been this deep in the tournament in a while. Their deepest trip the last few years. They got to the section final last year, and they were beaten by Simeon. Hey, that last shot was Michael Rimberg. Michael Rimberg played his high school basketball at Mount uh, at uh, Mendo, the old Mendo. What a ball player he was. Where Jim Angio yep. went to high school. So here we go. St. Pat's down by a pair. 3.08 to go. Breland and Thomas have been doing most of the damage for St. Pat's. Thomas trying to get around Cameron. Thomas goes up and didn't get the call on the contact, but got the bucket. Yeah, he's able to get it up. Tied at 42. Mr. Corner of the lane, yep. travel with the basketball, and St. Pat's will get a chance to get the lead yeah. back. Yeah, that's exactly the right call. He took an extra step. But now watch this layup here. You get, you get to the basket, you attack it, and we get a little bump and a little push, but yet then, again, strong enough, Jim, to get it in. Now, you have to be pretty strong. Here's your contact, and he's still able to put that in with A.J. Thomas. Dylan Fulbright goes in for Mount Carmel. Noah Mister comes out. It looks like one of the Catholic League brethren of Mount Carmel and St. Pat's is on their way downstate. DePaul is leading Crystal Lake South 50 to 27 with two minutes left to go in the fourth quarter at Hoffman Estates. One thing about Tommy Clash and the DePaul team, they only give up like 20 points a game. Right, yeah, they're amazing. They are amazing on defense. Three-pointer for the lead. That one's off. Grant Best has had a big night on the boards. Got another one. Offensively and defensively. Sheravino shovels it off. Yeremovich baseline. Jumper wouldn't go. Rattled around. Thomas got the rebound. 
Kept it alive. No, he did not. He traveled with the basketball. Mount Carmel gets it right back with 2.09 to go. He was on the way down. The official call for travel. Phil Seagroves calls a timeout to discuss with his team. Knows this is a key possession because if they don't score here, you got a big, pretty good defense. Then all of a sudden, you're you're a little bit behind the eight ball because right. you're you're trying to answer and get a service break essentially. Well, it's a tough call because he had the rebound. It's a tough call to call the travel. AJ Thomas has all the points for St. Pat's in this fourth quarter with eight. Wow. Talking about carrying a team on your back. <laughs> all eight points. Very hard to do. As some of the Flossmore fans are here. Don't forget, following this game, we have number one, Curie. Number two, Flossmore. It doesn't get any better than one versus two. HF has had an unbelievable season, but they will get a matchup against the public league champions coming up in their super sectional matchup. So you know, look at Jordan Lynch in the tan hat pointing. Yeah. So is, is that, is he wearing dad's name on the jersey or Michael Jordan's name? I think it was Michael Jordan's name. I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's toss up. I'm pretty sure it was Michael Jordan's name. I mean, I, I would tend to think you're right because of the Carolina blue yeah, yeah. on the jersey, but his dad's name is Jordan. His name is Jordan. Mount Carmel will inbound. Game tied at 42. Best to Sheravino. Catch and shoot. Couldn't get it. Knocked around. And the rebound pulled down by Kavanaugh. That was a set play. So here we go. Mike Bailey calls timeout. He has explicit instructions about what he wants out of this possession. Well, if you know Coach Bailey, he's going to tell his guys, be strong with the ball, run your offense, take a good shot. They're not a team that's going to just come out and just start to run and gun. It's a team that's going to take a really, really good shot. Well, after tonight is done, we will know the identities of the 16 teams that will be on their way to Champaign for the boys' semifinals. You can see all the action coming up this weekend on the UNCW 26, 1A through 4A semifinal games live Thursday and Friday on the U and the IHSA state final Saturday on CW 26. Catch all the games on the U and CW 26. The game between Mount Zion and Centralia, Kenny, mm -hmm. and that the winner of that game plays the winner of this game. That game does not get underway until another couple of minutes. Let's check in with Brandon Pope before we go back to action here. Hey guys, Neve Hawkins fouled out here, visibly distraught on the sideline. He had his towel over his face. A lot of rough emotions here. His teammates trying to console him, help him out there. Coach Mike Bailey telling these guys, this is the moment to lock in, press forward, and push the ball. Let's see how it goes. And let's see what Mike Bailey called. Thomas has been the hottest scorer on the floor for St. Pat's so far. Harper Krolak. Right now, St. Pat's is looking, but they're not probably not going to shoot unless they see an absolute open look. Foul situation. Mount Carmel has committed three team fouls. A little bit of a chance of a trap over there on the far side, and... Timeout. Timeout Mike Bailey with 119 to go. So the plan apparently was to run 40 seconds off and then call it on timeout. Yeah, he's about to fall out of bounds, and then you really you double team because you can't step out of bounds and you had the defender behind you. Now here's a situation where the new foul rule might come into play because if you were in this situation with a foul to give at this point, if it was one and one, you might go ahead and commit the two fouls right. and get them on the line. Because at worst, they're going to get two, but you might get the ball without them getting any. Right. But that doesn't exist anymore because once you go to the bonus, after five fouls and a quarter, it's two, it's shots. two shots. Yeah. So now you don't want to put them on the line with the two shots. Caravan crowd still here. 
probably sold a few of those back-to-back -back state champs. Oh, I bet they sure did. It's right after Thanksgiving, <laughs> you think? Oh, yes. St. Pat's cheerleaders, by the way, they come from generally from Resurrection and from Nazareth. Okay. We I asked before the game. Because obviously St. Pat's and Mount Carmel are all boys' schools. Mount Carmel actually discussed going co-ed a few years ago and opted not to do so. Yeah, well that conversation took about 30 seconds. <laughs> 117 to go in a tie basketball game. One wow. minute to go. Krolak with the basketball. You would think it's got to be Breland or Thomas, and there is the foul that Mount Carmel had to give. Yep, he gave it to him with a little, little bit of a shove with the hip. Not much contact. That foul is on Grant Best, his second. So the next foul by Mount Carmel, St. Pat's will go to the line. Shamrock's basketball. Cameron Thomas has the most fouls for Mount Carmel with three. Breland snuck a look, hung on to the basketball. A.J. Thomas, 40 seconds to go. Krolak just holding it right now. Mike Bailey wants his guys to go. Mount Carmel comes out with 28 to go. Krolak is the guy they'd rather have it if you're Mount Carmel. And now it's back in the hands of Breland. 19 seconds left. The St. Patrick's crowd coming to their feet. 12 seconds to go. Nine. Krolak has it. Krolak drives. Puts it up. Can't hit. Rebound. Sherabino. Timeout. Mount Carmel with 3.2 to go. How did Sherabino not travel? Wow. Good shot. Didn't go in. Sherafino with the rebound, and everybody from St. Pat is hollering travel. So he, he went down, and they say no travel, so it will be the caravan's ball. St. Pat's ran down all but the last three seconds of the final two minutes of the quarter on the same possession. Now, let's see, let's see this last possession. So now, you do a wonderful job. He gets to the basket, misses the layup. Now, here's your re here's a rebound. Did he travel? No. Okay, Mount Carmel only has two field goals in this quarter, but both of them are three-pointers. With 3.2 three to go, That's you might be able to get it down there quite a ways. You don't necessarily have to take a three here, but I would suspect in all likelihood the shot that Mount Carmel gets here is going to be a three. Well, the thing is, will St. Pat, and they are not going to pressure the ball. St. Pat's has only two team fouls. I would foul, but not in the act of shooting. Timeout, St. Pat. Yeah, I mean, I, I, would, if, I would make sure that they get it in the front, in the backcourt, and, and then foul. jump up and foul and make them inbound again. Right, and that's the reason you foul, to put the pressure on them to inbound the basketball again. Well, um, um, so that was a good timeout. St. Patrick, they wanted to see what Mark Palmer was doing. And one good thing about St. Patrick, you want to keep track of the fouls and all the scoring. Coach Bailey's daughter, Kelly, who was sitting right next to the bench, down from us, not only is she keeping a book for St. Pat's, she's also the official scorekeeper of the Chicago Bulls. So you know she knows how to keep track of the files. Kelly Bailey doing a wonderful job, but not only for her dad here at St. Patrick's, but also for the Chicago Bulls. When it comes to threes for Mount Carmel tonight, Grant Best has been exactly that. He has three so far tonight. Any kind of a score by Mount Carmel on this possession puts them in the lead. And who knows, maybe gives them the win. Best, Juremovich, Cameron Thomas. 
Sheravino and Noah Mister on the floor for Mount Carmel. They will not pressure best on the inbound pass. Sheravino has it, There's and they the give the foul. That was Crowell. So you put the pressure on Mount Carmel to get the ball in bounds again. St. Pat's can commit one more foul without sending Mount Carmel to the line. And I would do the same thing again. Sheravino on his way to the basket. That'll be well short. We're going to overtime. Why not? Why not? Tied at the end of three. We are tied at the end of four. And we will play at least four extra minutes to determine which of these teams will advance. But here's the inbounds pass. Boy, that is a really good pass. I thought they would foul again to put the pressure. And boy, you could have had a foul right there. A little bit of a contact, but the official said no. Because it looked like Breeden had a little contact. Did Breeden have a little contact? Could have gone either way. The official said, you know what? We're going to let him go. But even if they had called the foul, it still would not have put Mount Carmel into the bonus. It would not have been a shooting foul unless they had determined it was in the act. Right. Which it was not. So we go a little extra, a little extra overtime. Well, look at Mount Carmel. 12 offensive rebounds today. Five by best. DePaul College Prep has beaten Crystal Lake South 51-31. So the Rams advance downstate in the 3A Super Sectional at Ottawa Township, by the way, which is one of those great high school gyms mm. in Illinois. Thornton and Richwoods are tied 24-all at the half. And then Mount Zion and Centralia are just underway. There's the coach's helper. So here we go. It's been a while since anybody has scored because remember, St. Pat's ran off the final two minutes essentially of the clock before they did not score on their last possession. Well, what a ball game. Everything you could ask for. An overtime super sectional, giant crowd here on hand. But there are some people not happy about overtime, and they are the players for HF and the players for Kerry. They have to cool their heels for a while more before they can get out onto the floor. Tip controlled by Mount Carmel. Thomas across the floor. Grant Best to Sherabino. Sherabino had it taken away. Good defense. Good hands. Thomas knocked it away, got the pass back, and gives St. Pat's the lead in overtime. Well, getting your offense from your defense. What a great job by Thomas. Stealing the basketball, getting it back for the layup. And now St. Pat's is going back into their zone, which they've been in all night. 17 for A.J. Thomas. Mister for three. He's been shooting all night. Finally got one to drop, and Mount Carmel leads by one. Well, one thing shooters do, they shoot. Right. <laughs> you have to have a very short memory. Yep. Keep shooting. That's what shooters do. A.J. Thomas has the last 10 points of the game for St. Pat's. Wow. That's incredible. Cavanaugh to Krolak. Krolak took the final shot of regulation for St. Pat's. Stays with it, tries to back his man down, and just not finding anything that he likes because Jeremovich is either A, getting in front of him, or B, making sure he guides him to where Sheravino is coming up to help on D. And now A.J. Thomas has the basketball. Thomas, a little farther than he liked, didn't shoot it, taken away by Mr. Thomas in front. Thomas lays it in, Mount Carmel by three. Boy, Thomas doing a wonderful job getting down court, showing the speed. Again, another crucial turnover by St. Pat's. The two Thomases have 29 in this game. St. Pat's down by three. This match is Mount Carmel's biggest lead of the game. Kavanaugh was committed. Best misses the free throw. By the way, Mount Carmel...
and St. Pat's will both go to the bonus on the next foul by the opponent. 1.43 to go. Caravan leading by five. Juremovic hopped out and stopped Breland. Now Breland goes to the basket, puts it up, and got it. Breland was stopped at one point on that drive and then just stayed with it and waited. Timeout called by Mike Bailey. 1.27 to go, and the Caravan leading by three. So now the Caravan, they have to get the ball inbounds. Be smart and strong with the basketball. It has been a game of streaks. Let's toss it to Casey. Guys, it was all smiles from Mount Carmel head coach Phil Seagroves going into this overtime. He was calm and quiet. He said, listen to me. We can win this game. Get the ball to the corner. We've got to get a post touch or two. He seems thrilled here to have another shot, Jim, and it's been going well for them so far. Their deepest trip in the state tournament that came back in 1984. They were the double-A champions, but they've won tournaments this year. They won the Grant Thanksgiving Invitational, and they won the Peak and Holiday Tournament between Christmas and New Year's. So they're a tournament-tested team, but the pressure's a little bit different when you're playing yeah. in the state. Yeah, when you're in the state, a little bit different. Right. Because you don't have any room for error. I'll tell you what, we, we have a really, really nice crowd here today. St. Pat's two for two shooting the ball from the floor in overtime, and both of those have come off turnovers. Caravan three for three from the field in overtime, but they have done it without the benefit of turnover by St. Pat's. So the two teams are perfect in overtime so far. Noah missed her in the front court. Knocked down a three the last time he shot the basketball. Best lost the handle. He was fouled by A.J. Thomas. That is his first, and Mount Carmel goes to the bonus. Just really quick, want to mention that the fouls do not reset going to overtime. Here it is again. Now watch the hand. He'll try to strip it from the back there, but he gets him on the elbow. Best three of five from the line missed his last free throw. That was the one that was the end one. What a ball game he's had. 17 points. And 13 rebounds. Got the second one. Mount Carmel matching their biggest lead of the game at five with 1.14 to go. Must score possession for St. Pat's. And they have to move rather quickly. Breland to Krolak. Krolak guarded by Cameron Thomas. Under a minute to go. Krolak started to drive, was stopped. Breland has a height disadvantage as he's looking at Sherabino. Breland continues on. Got to the low block. Fall away block by Sherabino. Sherabino lost the handle at midcourt. A collision. And it looks like the foul is going to go against Cavanaugh. Boy, Sheravino with the defense. We always talk about his offense being the Catholic League Player of the Year. But what I like about this block, Jim, when he blocks the ball, he controls it as well. Another change, too, Kenny. You're seeing it now because of the new foul rule. You don't have to put rebounders up there on the first free throw anymore. You can let everybody go back, and that's exactly what Phil Seagrove is doing as Sheravino makes the free throw. That's three. Three blocks for Sheravino. Makes both free throws. So Sheravino was one out of his first four. Now he's four out of his last four. Timeout Mount Carmel. That's that timeout to fit the defense. So okay, guys. If you're gonna play defense here, we're gonna make sure we don't reach. Make sure you move your feet. Remember, you don't want to stop the clock. You don't want to put them on the line. The next Mount Carmel foul will put St. Pat's into the bonus. St. Pat's has only shot six free throws so far tonight. Yeah, that, that, that's the one thing that I'm sure Coach Bailey will 
go back and talk about because that I means you didn't attack the basket. You're depending too much on outside right. shooting. And we continue to see these wonderful crowd here. Well, we had a big crowd last year for the Downers North game, oh, mainly, be, mainly because of Downers North, but I think we've got more people yeah. in here tonight. Yeah, because behind us is also full. Right, all the way to the corner. Well, this is pretty impressive. Can the caravan hold on to this seven-point lead over the last 39 seconds? Three-point shooting for St. Pat's. Breland with three, Krolak with two. St. Pat's, after starting out pretty well in the first half from three-point land, they're just two of ten in the second half and overtime shooting three-pointers. Well, that timeout was to discuss defense, which I'm sure it was no foul. They don't necessarily need a three on this possession, but they have to get something quick. Kavanaugh with the basketball. Breland trying to get free. That is a three at the front of the iron. Rebound by Noah Mister. And Mister will get fouled, and now we'll get a chance to shoot. Well, smart play by Mister. Once he got the board, he just hugged the basketball because he knows the foul is coming. You don't want to make a turnover. What a ball game. Noah Mister is on the line for the caravan. Mister, two out of three from the line. He's made his last two. <laughs> wasn't sure about that one, but he got it. Oh, they're going to wipe it off. Yep, no basket. He wiped it off. Correction, lane violation, no shots. Yeah, Interesting. So he stepped over the line. Yeah, he, he, he felt it was short, and he stepped over the line as soon as he shot it. Yeah, got the second one. 23 seconds to go. Krolak, 4-3. That one is off, tapped out by Best. Noah Mister with the rebound. Mister into the front court. Sheravino, he'll finish it off for Mount Carmel. And that's an uh, exclamation point by the Catholic League player of the year. Sheravino only had three in the opening half. He finishes tonight with 15. Mount Carmel outscores St. Patrick 14 to 4 in the overtime period and Mount Carmel is on their way to the 3A state semifinals. Good night. Well, what a performance by Mount Carmel, the Catholic League player of the year. Comes alive after a slow start. Shows why he was voted the Lawless Award winner as the best player in the Catholic League. The caravan trailed by nine right off the hop and then just gradually made their way back, tied the game after the end of three quarters of play, went into overtime, and then in overtime, they went into overdrive. Time now for our players of the game. First of all, for St. Patrick, A.J. Thomas, 17 points, 8 rebounds. And he was dominant in the fourth quarter. He had all the field goals for St. Pat's in the fourth quarter. And on the other side of the floor for Mount Carmel, got a couple of candidates we could give this to, but we are going to go with Grant Best. Remember the three-pointer he had right before halftime? Really kind of changed the momentum. He ends the game with a double-double. 18 points, 13 rebounds, knockdown three-pointers. Grant Best is our player of the game for Mount Carmel. Remember, we have another game coming your way in just a few moments. It is the 4A super sectional matchup. Number one, Curie. Number one, two, home with Flossmore. That's coming up in about 20 minutes. For Kenny McReynolds, I'm Jim Blaney. We're sticking around. We hope you will, too. Final score, Mount Carmel advances, beating St. Patrick 56-46. Stay tuned. Brandon and Casey will take you through the between games, and then we're back for the 4A Super Sectional coming up in 18 minutes and 18 seconds.
she doesn't mince words. Why aren't you stopping the behavior if it's happening right in front of you? Compassionate. You should be mad at one person, and that's him. She never accepts disrespect. Oh. Stop your nonsense, or we will be escorting you out. Justice for the People with Judge Million. Weekdays at 1 and 1.30. Hi, I'm Blake. And I'm Wendy, and we're Express Property Solutions. We're buying as-is houses for cash all across the area. We buy properties